The October 2023 issue of Imaging Neuroscience delivered some bad news for those of us who use what they called Zoom-like or webcam-mediated face-to-face interactions. I can't explain the science behind their study, but one of the findings is, surprise, Zoom isn't as good for social interactions as in-person communication. But as Zoom-like interactions aren't likely to be going away anytime soon, particularly in a work environment, there are some things that you can do to make the experience a little more tolerable. Let's focus on what you, as a participant, can do to help create Zoom meetings that are more effective in both time and money. While we'll probably cover some things you already know, there may be some new hints you can use. As I know you can slow me down, I'm going to speed through these things, from controlling what you see, to moving things around to make things easier for you, to controlling what others see and hear of you. Let me begin, however, with a few caveats. There may be some differences between what you see in this video and what you see on your screen. For one thing, I'm using a Windows computer and you may be using a Mac. Zooming by phone is an entirely different animal. And keep in mind that Zoom is always adding new features. Even if you use another video conferencing platform, knowing what options you have in Zoom may help you figure out how to use them elsewhere. We'll start with controlling what you see as a participant. To the right on the very top of your Zoom window, you'll see three controls. A horizontal line, minimize, a box or an overlapping set of boxes, depending on your view, and an X, which exits you out of Zoom and closes the program. Clicking the minimize line will reduce your video to a smaller window with just one person showing, usually the person speaking. And you have control over where it is, so you can move it out of the way if you need to. You'll find this works in other aspects of Zoom, like when you or someone else is sharing a screen. To get back to full screen, hover your cursor over the bottom right corner of the video window and you'll see a box with a green arrow. Click that and you're back to full screen. Depending on what view you are in, you'll see either a single box or two overlapping boxes next to the minimize line. Clicking that will change the size of your zoom screen. It will cover your entire screen or a smaller part of it that you can resize. Right underneath that, in the actual Zoom window, you'll see an icon with the word View next to it. Click, and you should see several options, some of which only apply if you are the host. The rectangle with three boxes above it is to put Zoom in speaker view. The person currently speaking will be in a large window in the center of the screen, with other participants in smaller windows above it. The highlighted speaker changes as well, whoever is speaking changes. The 3x3 three three icon is gallery view, where you can see everyone, well, unless it spills over to more than one page. One of my favorites is the show or hide self view. I highly recommend you hide yourself from you. Others will still see you. That's because looking at yourself in the meeting is exhausting at worst and distracting at best. And you also have the option of not showing those participants who don't have their videos on. Hopefully, you won't need that option. Seeing just black boxes or someone's picture can make Zoom more stressful and definitely less like the in-person communication you are trying to mimic. Not seeing someone's face means you can't interpret their nonverbals and sometimes wonder if they're even there, which, depending on the situation, can impact trust. Let's move next to, well, moving things around. I already showed you that you can resize and move your Zoom screen around during a meeting so you can see your desktop underneath. You can also do that when someone is screen sharing. We'll start in gallery view. I like to see as many faces as I can. Who you want where can be changed to, to a point. Just use your cursor to grab someone's Zoom window and move it. The exception is if someone raises their hand. You'll find the raise hand or lower hand option in the Zoom meeting controls toolbar. Keyboard shortcuts are Alt-Y for Windows computers, Option-Y for Macs, and an asterisk or star 9 if you are participating on a phone. You may hear a ding when you do that. 
Whoever raises their hand gets moved to the upper left spot. Oh, and don't forget to lower your hand. Unlike Zoom's emoji reactions that will disappear after 10 seconds, and you have a lot of those to choose from, we'll get to that later, you'll have to remember to lower your hand or people will think you still have a question. Say you always want to see one person, like a timer or the meeting organizer. You can pin them by going to the upper right corner of their video image. Click the three horizontal dots in the blue box and choose Pin. You'll see other options there too, like Chat, which will open up a chat window and send a message just to that person. You can unpin a person by clicking the icon in the upper left corner of their video image, the one that looks like, what else? A pin, with the helpful words, remove pin next to it. You can also request live transcripts or closed captions from the Zoom meeting controls toolbar. If you don't see the option, you may have to ask the host to enable live transcription service, assuming they have the option to do that. The transcripts won't be perfect, but they could be helpful. In addition to controlling what you see, you can control what others see and what they hear of you. No one wants to hear your background noise, whether it be a dog barking, the TV in the other room, or someone coughing. The fix? Mute yourself. To do that, go to the lower left corner on the Zoom Meetings Control toolbar and click the Mute button, the one that looks like a microphone, until you see a red line. That tells you you are muted, and you'll see it on the lower left of your webcam image too. The problem for me usually is unmuting myself when I need to talk. While you can drag your cursor over to the corner to mute and unmute yourself, there are two other tricks. Keyboard shortcuts, Alt-A, A for audio, on a Windows computer, Command-Shift-A on a Mac, or asterisk or star 6 on a phone. Those will toggle the mute on and off. You may hear a ding to tell you Zoom recognized your command. Or you can press and release the space bar, using it like a walkie-talkie. Keep mute as your default so that when you press down and hold the space bar, you are unmuted. Release it, and you are muted again. If others forget to unmute themselves when they start talking, you might want to use a nonverbal signal to let them know. I like to cock my head to the side and point at my ear to send that message. If enough people do it, the person may see it and be able to adjust a little more smoothly. Warning! While I know you'd never stray from a Zoom meeting, if you somehow get distracted and respond to an email or do something else in another screen, you'll need to click somewhere on the Zoom window before using any of these shortcuts. Before we move to visual aspects, let me remind you that eye contact is important and nowhere near as natural in a virtual environment as in a face-to-face -face one. People may not know who you were talking to if you don't say their name first. And even if you are looking at their little webcam image, they won't know. In fact, it may even look like you are trying to avoid eye contact by looking down. So try to look at your webcam instead of the person. If that's difficult, move their image to right under the webcam. You probably know how to turn your video feed, your picture, on and off. That's down on the left side of the Zoom Meetings Control toolbar. Or you can use the keyboard shortcuts, Alt-V, V for video, or Command-Shift-V on a Mac to toggle your video on or off. The Zoom Meeting Control bar is also where you can change your background, blurring it, using one of Zoom's standard backgrounds, or adding a custom background. I'm a Harry Potter and Disney fan, so you'll see that I have those options too. Be careful though, as these backgrounds aren't perfect, especially when you are trying to show us something. And to go back to your real background, choose None. Your name, as displayed in your Zoom video window, can be important. You can rename yourself by going to the upper right corner of your webcam image to the three dots in the blue box. Rename is right there. One final thing. You have many ways to communicate your reaction to what's being discussed beyond using your words in your face. Zoom offers you a lot of emoji reactions that you can put in your webcam image. You'll find those in the Zoom Meeting Controls toolbar. Use them. Someone may ask, 
Is everyone feeling okay about this decision? It's quicker to see a lot of thumbs up or down than to check to see if everyone is nodding or shaking their heads. Just don't go a little crazy with the animated ones. There is so much more you can do with Zoom, but knowing how to control what you see, moving things around, and controlling what others see and hear of you might make your Zoom meetings a little more tolerable, at least until virtual reality becomes more of a reality.